Okay, hello guys, welcome back to the power circuit and electromechanics lecture 2. So in this lecture, we're going to look at magnetic circuit and mutual inductance. So in this first part, we'll look at the magnetic circuit. We are using electromagnetic theory as the basis to explain the operation of own electrical and electromechanical system. We see the, the topic of this course. So we know that there are magnetic field and also electric field. However, in this course, the discussion is restricted to magnetic field system. We have Maxwell equations for equation as you learn in uni university physics. Okay? And uh, we're going to use these equations to look at our magnetic circuit. You have heard of electric circuit. We are trying to use the knowledge you know about electric circuits to simplify the learning curve, the learning process for magnetic structures. So first, first step, we're going to look at static magnetic circuits. When we say static, we mean there are no m moving components in those circuits. So let's have a look at a toroid as this picture illustrates. So this toroid has some wire, okay, wound on it. Assuming we have n turns and R enough, R enough, and R1 are the inner and outer radius R enough here. R up is from the middle here to this point, and R1 is from the middle here to the outer radius. So let's consider a contour corresponding to the mean radius R, and we assume the magnetic field intensity is uniform inside the core. Applying the ampere circuit law, it can be determined that uh, Hc multiplied by the peripheral of that mean radius, um, that mean uh, contour, uh, is equal to the total of magnetomotive force, which is Ni. We are supplying a current I, and it's going through the core n time. So the total number is n i and two pi r equal l c is called the mean length in the core. We assume the uh, flux density b is a linear function of h. Uh, fuel intensity in the core and therefore the flux density in the core BC is calculated like this like this therefore we can calculate the flux by multiplying the flux density with the the cross-sectional area through which the flux is going through and therefore we have this at the final expression, flux in the car, Vc, equal to Ni divided by Lc, divided by mu Ac. And the unit is Weber. In this formula, mu is the magnetic permeability of the core material, and Ac is the core cross-sectional area. We define Ni as the magnetomotive force, MMF, 
And we can also define reluctance as the ratio between MMF and the flux. So MMF divided by flux, MMF divided by flux will give us R. The invert P is 1 over R is called the permanence. And we also define another thing. There are many definitions in this lecture. Flux linkage is defined as lambda equal n time of the Vc. Okay? And finally, we define cell inductance, L, of a coil is the ratio between the flux linkage and the current the current created that flux okay there are similarity between the electrical circuit and magnetic circuit so here the mmf is equivalent to voltage the flux is similar to current and reluctant is similar to resistance and finally permanent is similar to conductance so so that's the, the first example we look at the toroid and now let's assume that we have an air gap in that toroid but we still assume that there is no fringing okay later we will see what fringing is okay so the flux density we will have uh, two different environment now the air and the core so the material of the core might be different from the the air so we assume in general we have the magnetic field intensity in the, the air gap and in the the core made of iron normally and we assume the length of the air gap is lg and the mean length of the core is lc Applying the ACL ampere circuit law around the contour C, we have Ni now equal HgLg and HgLc. Okay, and we will end up with the the expression like this, where we have mu nuff is four pi ten to the minus seven Henry per meter is the air permeability. And mu r is the relative permeability of the core compared to the air. We also apply the Gauss law on the closed surface S covering one magnetic pole to find out BG AG. We see the total flux going through the air, the air gap is equal to BC AC, which is the flux going in the core. And, and it should be like that because the flux is similar to the current. So current in many uh, circuit, in, in series circuit, you will see that we have the same current going through all the components. So it's just ex exactly the same case here. If we don't have any fringing, then AG would be equal to AC. The, the effective cross-sectional area for the air gap is equal to the effective cross-sectional area the core and therefore we can conclude that BG equal BC and we divide the, the, the MMF by the total flux to calculate the total reluctance of the circuit we can find out that it would be equal to the first part is the reluctance of the air gap and the second part is the reluctance of the core Therefore, in our equivalent magnetic circuit, these reluctance are in series. And we now look at the, the closest uh, model to the real magnetic circuit where we have some fringing. Fringing means uh, not all the flux is confined to the area between the two faces of the core. So in this case, our effective area in the air gap would be a little bigger than the effective 
quotient area in the core. Okay. Uh, this effective air gap area can only be calculated through experiments. So from the book we have two us two formula to use. It's either the air gap area equal to A plus L G multiplied by B plus L G as you can see here where A and B is the dimension of a rectangular magnetic pole. Or you can just use the AC is 1.1 uh, time of the uh, AC, AC. 